Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show, 101. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> Wes Troop, and I am back this week with another history episode. Well, where are we headed to in our time-traveling doom buggies this week? Back to 1957 Disneyland, because we still have a lot of unfinished business back in that year. And, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it might be a surprise to you, but you might not know this. There was once a picnic area right outside of Disneyland, where some major attractions are today. That's right, and we're going to talk about it right now, because in this episode, we're going to discuss Holidayland Picnic Area. Back in the first few years of Disneyland, right outside of the park, a picnic area could be found. It was located on the outside berm along the western edge of Disneyland. The nine-acre grassy picnic ground was known as Holidayland, which opened on June 16, 1957. The area could hold up to 7,000 guests for large events, and it catered to corporations, unions, and big companies. Holidayland had a lot to offer as far as activities and, and entertainment were concerned, with a number of playgrounds, which had special monkey bars in the shape of a castle, as well as a Conestoga wagon. You could also find a baseball field, volleyball net, and an area to play horseshoes. The space also sported the very familiar-looking world's largest candy-striped tent, which of course had previously been used for the extinct Mickey Mouse Club Circus and Keller's Jungle Killers show. The tent had a stage as well and was used for presentations. Food and concessions were available to purchase, and the meals were catered by the Red Wagon Inn. Of course, you could bring your own meal into the area as well. Surprisingly, beer was sold at Holiday Land, even though it couldn't be found right next door on Disneyland property. Guests could dine at the many, many picnic tables provided in Holiday Land. <laughs> what many guests going to Holiday Land didn't realize at first was that admission to Holiday Land did not include admission to Disneyland. This made many guests angered, and they either didn't go to the event at Holiday Land, or they would simply leave. After a while, when sales began to hurt, Holiday Land made some changes. Groups now had the option to add admission to Disneyland when purchasing the tickets for Holiday Land. The area then had its very own special admission gate, which crossed over the tracks of the Disneyland Railroad in Frontierland. Also, if you bought tickets to Disneyland, you weren't permitted to drink alcohol while at Holiday Land. Because of a mix of a number of elements, including lack of shade, no lighting at nighttime, no restrooms, and the lack of a certain Disney feel, Holiday Land closed in September of 1961. Some of the area is now used as a parking lot for employees, while the space that the striped tent stood in is now part of the 999 Happy Haunts and the Haunted Mansion. And the baseball field is now the area a little ride known as Pirates of the Caribbean can be found. While unknown to many casual park goers today, Holiday Land was an interesting area in Disneyland's early days that is now referred to by some as Disneyland's Lost Land. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another episode very soon, as well as another Hitchhiking Host show, where we'll talk about the trending topics going down in the Disney parks. But until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube youtube.com slash hitcho show like the show on facebook facebook.com slash hitcho show follow on the twitter at hitcho show and if you want to listen to the show or you are listening to the show do so over on podbean hitcho show.podbean.com or search under west troop or the hitchhiking host show on itunes or stitcher until next time don't forget to For the next episode, see ya.